All right, welcome. It is the Wednesday edition, November the 27th, 2019. It is the NBA tip-off show powered by wagertalk.com. I'm Joe Ranieri, joined by our good friend there, Hakeem Prophet, uh, along with Dr. Chuck Rx, Tony Finn, also hanging out with us today as we have, I don't know, one, two, uh, a boatload of games. We got a lot of games here tonight in the NBA to go over. Got a lot of things here that uh, we want to talk about, kind of push you guys in the right direction. And I think we will start, first and foremost, by reminding you, pretty cool stuff here, Thanksgiving, Right through Monday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, right up until Monday there, we'll have uh, packages available. Nine bucks, guys. Uh, your plays all Thanksgiving long for just nine bucks. And I would also recommend that each one of these guys, you tail them on Twitter. Addresses are there, at Ski Profit, at Dr. Chuck RX, at Finn, at Wager Talk. I'm getting really good at saying that, Tony. So we are good to go. It's flowing. It's like a flow. It's like an ocean. It's flowing I'm, here. I'm just going to add another at just oh. because you said that. Yeah, just yeah, if you could add a few more letters, too, so oh. I could buy a vowel here. Um, all right. So like we do every show here, guys, let's dive into a little bit of a recap. Last night it was two-game slate, so not a lot going on. And Ski, uh, we covered both of these games yesterday here on the show, and I think the thing that stuck out to us that we were – uh, we were focused on is what were we going to get from Dallas? Luka Doncic taking on the Clippers, different animal. How were we going to get any sort of uh, load something, any sort of load anything? And uh, we didn't. Actually, Luka got a load, uh, a whole load of uh, Clippers and Clippers bench and depth and everything else. What would you think of that game last night? Uh, I think Clippers, I mean, they heard enough about Luka, and they just wanted to show up and show everybody that they're still the top dog. So, that's what we saw last night. Dallas was the wrong side, and uh, it was no Luka magic. No, there was zero Luka magic there. Now, Dr. Chuck, anything in that game? Sure. I mean, listen, the bench, we know they have a bench, the best bench in the NBA. The Clippers, that's what makes them so lethal is that, you know, I think there was at one point in the game in the first quarter where they went to sit the starters, Dallas. By the time they got in, they were only down one. When they got in, it, they were down like double digits. Like, what the hell just happened here? And it's that bench, Dr. Chuck. The damn bench of the Clippers is brutal. Yeah, and both uh, Ski and I were on the Mavericks, at least in the first half, and it just seemed like it was going to be something where the Mavericks came out hot. And just, I mean, as he said, it was clearly the wrong side. And, you know, I mean, I, if we were going to get that bet, either full game or first half, Doncic was going to have to be one of the, you know, two best players on the court. Right. And the offensive end, he was the fourth best. You know, I mean, he, PG, Kawhi, and Lou all outplayed his ass, and he turned it over, what, seven times, really only scored from the line, and, you know, it was over before it started. Like you said, the bench was able to not lose any ground, if not gain ground, and it's going to be a problem. You mentioned yesterday that Porzingis hasn't been good, and I said I don't trust anybody else besides Doncic on that team, and I think in games where it's like they're playing the top dog, it's going to be an issue, I think. Yep, it you know, certainly like part is. Of it Known some spurts, but I don't trust him. I don't. No, not against that thing over there. I mean, Finn, it's easy to it's easy to say now, but uh, you know the Clippers are good, and oh yeah, Denver plays defense, especially at home, Finn. Like two of the best defensive teams. There's a reason, Tony, that Denver is what they are right now. Yes, I play. I gave a free play out on the over, and then Denver game, and I mentioned it. They're the, you know they're the fifth best efficient defensive efficiency in the league. Uh, Michael, Malone, Michael Malone has preached defense to this group, at least the group that's been around there, the core, for the last couple of years, day in, day out. Calls them at night, wakes them up at two in the morning, says, "You got to play more defense." And it, it is stuck with this, this group, and this is what makes them really good, especially at the Pepsi Center. Yeah. Big time. They're a different team at home, that is for sure. We got a 14-game NBA slate here. Some of the moves that we have seen early on, guys. Uh, the Utah Jazz getting a little bit of uh, love here. Actually, I I'm sorry. Not Utah. They're on the road. <laughs> Indiana getting the love here, it appears, that uh, this game opened up. Uh, at a uh, pretty much almost a pick them here. Minus one I'm seeing, but it's already been uh, pushing here. Pacers home team. Uh, Pacers seem to be getting a little love in this game, as is the Oklahoma City Thunder also seem to be getting a little bit love as they'll be taking on the Portland Trailblazers. And Ski, I'll start with you. Utah at Indiana. Are you a little surprised to see the line moving towards Indiana at this point? 
Well, Indiana's been good at home. We know they're a great home team, and Utah hasn't been as good on the road. So I'm not too surprised. Um, now that Indiana is healthy, they have Brogdon, they have Turner, uh, Sabonis, everybody in the lineup. Uh, they're starting to roll a little bit. So I'm not too surprised. Looking at the last five game stats, defense has been better. Uh, they should have a rebounding advantage here. I see Gobert as game time decision. Uh, if he's not in, it'll be even better for Indiana. So I understand. Uh, Indiana also seven and two first half against the spread at home. I might I might look that way, but I also look at the total. It's went under four of the last six for Indiana. The under is six and two on the road for the Jazz. First half under seven and one on the road for the Jazz. I might look for probably less points in this game. All right, and uh, Dr. Chuck, Utah, uh, Gobert, obviously he's been a little banged up here. He's been questioned uh, really pretty much for the whole week though. But Indiana at home, pretty solid, man. What do you think about this game? Yeah, I, I would go that way, too. I mean, it would have been nice to have gotten on it a little bit earlier when it was right there before it expanded to, I think it's, what, two and a half now. But with, without, you know, it's the same reason that the Jazz lost that other game, the game most recently with without Gobert. Is it, you know, even if he does play, I still kind of like the Pacers here at home on the short spread. But, you know, Hakeem has an interesting angle looking at the under there. It's It's not hard to back the jazz and an under game so that would be an angle but if you're telling me i just had to pick a winner in this game if you can get get it about minus one or minus two i i don't see the pacers losing this game healthy um get themselves going a little bit before maybe they get uh oladipo back maybe next week or the week after that so i think uh you know Nate mcmillan has this team rolling and they're gonna be a real force we reckon with just kind of like last year when oladipo comes back so i think they get this win tonight in the in the Jazz with or without Gobert. Whole lot of money uh, facing uh, at uh, Indiana at this point. You got the tickets just a tad bit towards Utah, but the money certainly towards Indiana. Tony Finn, does that uh, surprise you at all? Not at all. Uh, I really, I, I'm going to kind of veer off this topic. Not really. I'd like to know what you guys have if you do have it uh, and what you think the war is, at least what you think the market, uh, what the market will do once victor's back mm. what if victor was back tonight what would this number be and there's gonna have there's, there should be some talk there should be some conversation on this because um if brogdon's done what they signed him for what 84 85 million dollars i can't remember what it was four years for for a nice price uh i would have left philly too yep. for that price um what's he gonna do to this number dan and it makes a big big difference this is is he at two is he at three point what is he to the market on this game, for instance, tonight, if he was playing. And that said, I'd like to know. So, I, I, you guys kind of hit spark something uh, on me, and that is, if, if Rudy's not playing tonight, um, I'm I'm seeing a trend, and it's just memory trend. I'll have to do the numbers tonight, and I'll do them for you guys, or, or for anybody who's interested. And that is, what the the pace. I'm saying that the pace of Utah is playing at without without Rudy. Is different. They're scoring yeah. more points. They're scoring more points. Uh, they're not just good defensively in the paint, and they're trying to. They're trying to do. They're doing some things differently. And I'm very interested in. And in, while we have a small sample size, I'll get those numbers. Yep, a little more Mitchell here than uh, yeah. than usual. And uh, you know, Ski, we talked about a uh, kind of off air. Uh, you know, our boy Carmelo there yesterday. We talked about it dropping in 25 points. Huh? The game <laughs> three back, like that was. Well, like, come on, Carmelo. Well, they're they're home. <laughs> Oklahoma City Thunder coming to town, and we're seeing uh, definitely a, a kind of a, uh, a public sharp agreement here. Everyone seems to like the Oklahoma City Thunder. Opened up at three and a half, now moved to two and a half. Uh, moving towards the Thunder, what do you think about this? This is probably one I feel a little more strongly about. Um, Portland, I know they got that one win, but I'm just not ready to go jump on the Portland bandwagon now after they got the one victory. One and four straight up their last five. Um, even at home, they've been poor. OKC, they haven't really been good on the road, um, but they're four and two against the spread as a road dog. Four and one against the number of their last five games. Looking at last five game stats, offense advantage, defense, rebounding percentage, everything down the board goes to OKC. Um, the one thing I'll say is OKC is a little bit better in that first half, and sometimes they fall off in the second half. I know it didn't go that way versus Golden State, but uh, first half point margin plus three for OKC minus. Uh, 0.9 for Portland. OKC 8-3 against the spread. Their last 11 first halves. 
I like OKC on the first half. All right, liking that first half there. And uh, Dr. Chuck, OKC, Portland, love Carmelo. He's back there. Listen, it's it, it going to take a little while for Portland to get back to full strength here. You know, until they can get Jerkins back and everybody else, uh, it's – what, what are they going to do here at this particular point besides re you can't keep running the offense through Carmelo as much fun as it is to talk about. At some point, you got to get Lillard healthy. At some point, you got to have that combination working. But do you like OKC in this spot tonight? Yes, I would say I definitely agree with the movement. I, uh, I think Akeem and I both uh, talked with you out there. That ne neither of us are in that extreme Carmelo leader club. But, and, and I don't really think the Thunder are a very good team the way they're constituted either. But it's it's like he said, the, the Blazers aren't playing like they should be playing. And so I'm not I'm not a whole lot – I'm not a, much concerned with uh, only getting a small amount of points there. I think I, – I would like to have gotten it at the three, but I think it's a decent uh, play on Oklahoma City just to win this game on the money line. Mm -hmm. I, I like the uh, – if, if he was looking at that first half, I like the first half under. Okay. Last last five at home, the uh, Blazers have gone under four times. I think it's 112. Uh, both these teams, I think, see that direction. Plus, I also think that OKC holding the Blazers down a little bit brings this down a little bit more, too. And I kind of like that first half under, even the first quarter under, which both teams kind of tend to go that way on home road trends as well. So, I, you know, as far as looking at uh, quarters and have some props and things like that. I like first quarter and first half under in that game. All right. How about it, Finn? What do you think? You got uh, you got a feel for this game one way or the other? Well, I would, I would lean okay. See, only because I think they, uh, they, they've they surprised me, you guys, uh, what they've been able to do. I think 10 and I, what are they against the spread? 10 and 6? Some they're they're I don't know exactly what they are. I don't have those numbers in front of me, but I, I was surprised at what they've done against the number. I've been surprised what they've done as far as efficiency and, and holding opponents to. In the effective efficiency of field goal percentage, they're right there with some of the better defensive teams in, in the league right now. At least again, short sample, but um, I, I I like their as much as I didn't think I was going to like OKC this year. I like them a heck of a lot better than I like their opponents tonight. All right, and uh, one game I'm sure that we'll all agree upon here, and I know the public's going to agree on that. Everybody's going to want to watch. How about the Lakers opening up at a six and a half point favorite in New Orleans against the Pelicans? 9.30 Eastern time in this game. It will be the game of the night, of course. Uh, look, at more than 80% of the tickets, guys, the spread tickets are on the, uh, uh, to no shock here, the Lakers. But, uh, well, they got the best record in the league, so you can't fault them for that. But despite the public backing here with the Lakers, I'm, I'm seeing line movement towards the Pelicans here. And Ski, what's going on, man? What what am I missing? It's the damn Lakers. What's going on with this? And you know, this is for sure my, my favorite game of the day, just from a fan perspective. I love the Lakers. Uh, I even love the Pelicans now because they got majority of my Lakers over there. And that's what this <laughs> game is. Um, Ingram, Lonzo, Josh Hart coming back to LA, Anthony Davis going back to New Orleans. I think the energy for New Orleans is going to be really big. Like, the crowd is going to be into it. I think all of the players who got traded, they're going to get up for this game. Like, they're coming out for blood. So, if you're going to get effort in one game from the Pelicans, I think this is the game you're going to get it in. Um, so, I wouldn't run to the window to back, back the Lakers. The one thing I think about in this game that stands out to me are two things, actually. First, Pelicans are really poor on the first half. Uh, their last 12 first halves are 2-10 and 10 against the spread with the first half point margin of minus 6. So they're really poor to start the games. And secondly, Pelicans play fast, and they don't really play defense. And um, it's went over six of the last seven games. If Lonzo Ball is playing tonight, they're going to push the pace. And I think the Lakers, they want to play fast. We've heard Anthony Davis say, when we play fast, we're a tough team to beat. And with Rondo in, I like him to push the pace with the second unit. I like the game to go over. Uh, Lakers 6-1 and one against the number in the last seven against that Southwest division. And uh, Dr. Chalk, talk to us here, man. What do you think? Uh, the Lakers, too much hype, not enough substance. What are you buying here? Well, I think uh, both sides have a little bit of motivation because I think, you know, the talk, it's similar to what we discussed last night with the Clippers are hearing it, all this Doncic shock and they just you know, shut it down. They're the better team and we – unfortunately bought into uh, the, riding the hot hand. I, You know, Pelicans aren't necessarily the hot hand, but I feel like they think they're the slighted guys. You know, Ball and Hart and Ingram are 
the guys that uh, feel like they would have that motivation edge tonight, but I don't think Anthony Davis has any less motivation, and he's got the better supporting cast. I really I had that same stat up. It was only doing last 10, but last 12 is even worse. But, yeah, the Pelicans are 2-8 and eight, uh, against the spread in the first half. You only have to lay three with the Lakers on that. In that first quarter, the Lakers – go over on the road and you only have it's the first quarter is a 59 and a half right now and i love the over in that first quarter it's like he said the pelicans are going to have the motivation but i think the lakers are going to say let's run too and i think that especially starts early before any kind of adjustments and it feels like it feels like the pelicans do hang around that first quarter and it changes a little bit in the second quarter but i i would go lakers minus three first half and over in the first quarter a lot all right, Finn, come on, close us out here, man. What do you think? Are you a Lakers guy? You look like you got an Anthony Davis jersey under there somewhere, do you? No, I did not. Damn it. No, but I did uh, I did shave right here this morning. So. <laughs> and here's the deal. And here's, here's what I'm going with the Lakers. Okay. Now, and I think, uh, and I'm just going to watch. I, listen, I've been, I was on the Lakers uh, Monday night. Uh, I like what they did, uh, but... What I'm seeing in the Lakers, guys, is this, and it's getting to the point where we're going to have to break out a crystal ball. We're going to have to check our gut with this team because uh, like a good football team, like a good college football team against the lesser, the less thans in this league, I think the Lakers can do whatever they want. I think they can win by whatever they want. I, we have to start figuring out what this team, what their motivation is other than winning the game, which includes... Uh, covering a number, and I think it's real important because I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly that with LeBron basically behind the this locomotive, that they can go as fast as they want, they can go as slow as they want, they'll always dictate pace because of that, and they can win by whatever margin they want, obviously, against the less than. And, and Pelicans are less than. Love that. All right, guys, uh, there it is. Lakers uh, tonight. Getting ready. Join the Pelicans. Uh, it should be an epic battle, and I know there's going to be a lot of people watching that game tonight with some uh, with some interest, certainly homecoming of sorts for uh, AD there, the unibrow. But one of the other games wanted to look at here, also kind of, uh, I guess, maybe a homecoming of sorts, only this guy's nowhere to be found. How, how about Kyrie, man? Kyrie heading to, to Boston, only Kyrie's, I guess he's a little sensitive tonight, maybe he doesn't want to kind of go and hear it, but uh, bottom line is Brooklyn's on their way uh, to Boston here tonight, guys, and this game also seeing a little bit of uh, interesting uh, money come towards it. Celtics were uh, six and a half uh, across the board there in a lot of places. The under, right around that 225 and a half, 226 where it opened up, and uh, Ski, I'll start with you, brother, here. What do you think? It would be great if Kyrie was there, but he ain't, he ain't there, man. Like, he ain't going to be playing there tonight. Uh, yeah, it would be great for the fans uh, if Kyrie was there. I don't know how great it would be for the Nets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dinwiddie's like, no, nah, no, nah, take your time, brother. Take your time. Don't worry. You don't, have to, don't worry about it. You're good. Right. Dinwiddie's doing his thing. He's looking really good. Yeah. So, Nets, 5-1 and one straight up their last six games. 4-2 um, and two as a road dog. 4-2 and two against the spread their last six. And... When I look at this game, the thing that stands out to me, the Nets, since Kyrie hasn't been playing, they're playing better defense. Um, defensive rating over the last five games has jumped to eighth, where it was it was like damn near last in the league almost. But their offense has been a little bit worse. Both the offenses here, last five games, 26th and 30th. Both teams top 10 defensive rating. Pace-wise, Boston 29th, Brooklyn 24th. That's a really high total for two teams that are going to play slow and play defense. Um I don't. I didn't get to check the first half number, but the first half under at home for Boston, five and one. Um, they went under the last six first halves in general. Uh, I would look for less points in this game. Less points it is. All right, Doctor Chuck, what do you think, man? You expecting uh, they're going to be bombing all over the place, or are we going to get a grind them out kind of effort here tonight at the Garden? Well, I'm not looking as much at the total as I, I totally agree with this move and we'll have to see what Tony says because I know that he likes this game a lot as well. But I agree with the move and I'd, I'd probably lay up to double digits with the Celtics in this game. I, Kemba's probable. I'm assuming he's going to go. And I think, speaking of the motivation we talked about with the Lakers and Pels, I think Kemba has a little bit of motivation. Kyrie's been in the news, unfortunately, not for playing and now we're seeing things as headlines like Brad Stevens is adamant that he liked coaching Kyrie. And you're seeing things like the locker the locker room is just at complete ease with Kemba versus Kyrie. And 
I just think the Nets probably shouldn't have won the last two games they did win. Good for them for getting on this little bit of streak here, but I think the Celtics, you know, curbed some of that losing streak by getting that win against the Kings, and I think they, you know, tonight Kemba comes back, has a little extra motivation, and uh, Dinwiddie's by himself not enough to uh, keep it to single digits here. I, I, I mean, if they had to go one way or the other, I'd go under two because I think the Celtics can shut the Nets down almost completely, but this feels like Nets finish in the 80s to me, honestly. Yeah, Tony, uh, the, like he says there, the margin for error pretty thin there with, uh, uh, with the Nets. But Boston's lost three of their uh, three or four there on that trip, and they could have easily have won those games, by the way. I think they lost yeah. in overtime to the Clippers by a one to Sacramento, to, in Denver. I mean, they easily could have won those. They haven't lost at home, and here they find themselves tonight in Brooklyn. What do you like? It's typical Boston. This is a tip. This is a, this is a uh, Danny Ainge. Boston team and fight to the, you know they're never going to admit they're wrong uh, they're never never going to quit and I think they showed that really when when um, when you had no when you had no Kimba against the Kings and the Kings are less than two guys come on they're less than two when they had no Kings and uh, they start Brad Wanamaker right he was 0 for 8 from the floor mm -hmm. and they still find a way when Marcus Smart is leading your team and scoring at 17 I think is what he had and this team wins this team wins as long and I still think they're a great regular season basketball yes. team they're not going to be much in the playoffs because they don't have the big. You can play right through them with the Joel Embiid and some of the other bigs. And that's unfortunate because that's not what Boston fans want to hear. But tonight, uh, obviously, here's the deal. There's a, this, these teams meet one more time. I think Friday, don't they go back to the Nets mm -hmm. on Friday? Then they don't meet again until March. Right. Not till March. So um, these two games are important for a lot of the guys on both sides here tonight. And if I'm going to put my money on somebody's grit, it's without question, it is going to be the Celtics. All right, you're going to like the, uh, the you're going to love the Celtics here in this matchup. It's a it's a great card tonight, guys. As uh, teams are ready to go, also uh, plays available. All you got to do is head over to wagertalk.com. All of these guys here, Finn at Wager Talk, Ski Profit, of course. You guys at wagertalk.com. Don't forget about sportsmemo.com. You can check out Dr. Chuck RX. There plays all weekend long uh, from Thursday. That's right, Thanksgiving tomorrow through Monday, guys. Nine bucks. Go get your packages. Go get your plays, man. Go get it done right now at wagertalk.com. It's going to be one hell of a holiday weekend, that is for sure. We'll throw one more game at uh, towards you guys before we get some of the best bets here. Interested to get your, uh, your thoughts on this. How about, and, and there's two, and I'll ask you... I'll ask you, Ski, there. Give me an understanding of what in the hell, and we've talked about these guys now for a couple of a couple of shows, but will somebody explain to me what we're doing here with the San Antonio Spurs? Like, I'm lost here, brother. Like, I mean, honestly, I, I'm lost. I give up. I don't know. Um, they win, They finally won a game, uh, you know, a couple nights ago. Then they, wh What are we doing with San Antonio in this spot? Hey, you know, this is a tough one. I said before on one of the other shows that – Eventually, it will be a buy low spot for San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Not sure when it's going to come, but it's just so tough to put your money on these Spurs the way they've been playing. Uh, one in five against the spread last six. One in six as a home favorite. We think of the Spurs being a good home team. Yeah. And in general, I would think of the Timberwolves being bad on the road, but not so much this year. Four and one as a road dog. Um, I, I can't, I don't really love this game. The one thing I will say is I don't trust the Spurs to play defense. Mm. I, and the Timberwolves, they play fast. I would lean towards more points than not. I know since Jeff Teague has been switched to the bench, he kind of has the bench scoring a little bit better. They put up a lot of points in one of the other games when they first did it. So I would lean towards more points than not. It's went over the last six times these two teams have played. Dr. Chuck, tell me something, man. Am I, uh, am I crazy? Is it over or not? Milwaukee Bucks, Atlanta Hawks. 239 and a half is what it opened up at. I mean, Atlanta's getting, I don't know, two touchdowns, two and a half touchdowns. I yeah. mean, uh, but it's got to be over, right? Are we, are we, am I missing something? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so tough. It's going to end up being, it's going to end up probably being, assuming there's some over money, the biggest total of the year, I believe. If it gets, I think, well, I guess I'm not sure if it's got, if there's been an over 240 or not, but I don't know. I, I'm with Hakeem. I don't really like this game, honestly. I I know it's that uh, rabid revenge type spot. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I wouldn't be laying the points, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think that the, at at two forty, I'd still, you know, I'm an under guy. I'd probably still take the under and then just hope and pray that they break the hawk spirit in the second half and and stop the scoring. But it's yeah, it's, I mean, I think I think the Hawks have gone over six times in a row or something, and there's a there's a pretty solid trend to the under on that solid in, in that it's in the 55 58 percent range so right. I, it's not a slam dunk uh, but i mean you know we're dealing with totals that it's hard to track in database history type yep. stuff yeah i mean finn okay. talk to me man it's got i mean what do you do with the we know they can score both of these teams right, right. here's the deal there's the same amount of, they play the same amount of time seconds are the same right basketball still around the hoops are still the same size it only takes listen it doesn't take a whole lot to mess up and over mm -hmm. when it's 240 and i assure you i don't have the numbers in front of you but i assure you if you look at the history throw out the all-star games okay just throw them out but if you look at totals that are 240 rope and there's not a ton of them i guarantee you, not a ton of them um i'll bet right now a bottle of uh wellers or not well let's go my maker's mark that most of them came under. I love that. All right. Now, how about it, guys? We got 14 games, and, and he's right. I mean, it only takes a you know a three minute uh, cold streak there to screw your 240 up for sure there. Um, but let's talk about uh, some money lines. Let's talk about dogs, man. Oh, are the dogs are barking here on the schedule tonight. We got what 14 on the card. There are some. Uh, well, there are some. There's some short numbers on this card where it might favor uh, the look at maybe a possible uh, money line dog here. Ski, I'll start with you. Is there a is there a dog that you like here on the card that you circled? Uh, you know, there's a few. There's so many games. I got to scroll through just to remember. <laughs> but <laughs> if I have to pick one, I think one team that I do not trust on the road for sure, Detroit Pistons. Mm. I know the Hornets are like really bad, but Detroit on the on the road is just terrible. I think they're one seven, one and seven, or one seven and one against the number on the road. Um, it's it's a four point spread. I, I can see the Hornets winning outright. I don't. I, can, I absolutely one hundred percent agree with you on that, Doctor Chuck. What do you think? Is there a dog on the card you're looking at, my man? So I didn't get a chance to chime in, Tony, on whether or not I could take that bet. But if, if it's not too late, I would like to take that bet. Well, it's, it's, should we well, go, I wish we could go back to Weller, but I'm sure. I, I will go back to Weller. No problem. At all. My, uh, yeah. I think I think if it's two two forty or more, I think they've majority's gone over. Well, I think it's over fifty percent's gone over. Okay, That's right. Fine. Let's do that. I'll, I'll let you get the numbers. I'll let you fudge them, and you'll get that bottle yeah, of wellers. Absolutely, and you know it's coming, man. You know <laughs> right, it so is coming. Yep. Yep. So back to the matter at hand. Hakeem likes his team the best tonight, and I like the game involving my team. I unfortunately the the Sixers, you know, so it is off of a game, and beat, you know, didn't show up, and uh, he's had to uh, deal with that, even uh, being compared to having a worse night than Jared Goff. Right. But. Um, the, so uh, the Kings are in a spot where they're a road dog off mm -hmm. of a road dog loss and rest. The last 18, that's 14 and four against the spread. The Kings, um, when they're getting six or more points, the Sixers are also. So the Sixers are another team that haven't lost at home, mm -hmm. but they're not. They're four and three against the spread, and when it's double digits, so they've laid double digits three times. They won all three games. They haven't covered once. Right. And going back to last year, which is still mostly an intact team it's well not completely but they're 12 and 2 at home but only 5 and 9 against the spread and i mean it's going to be you can almost get 10 points with the kings tonight and that's not what the sixers cover at home and i don't think the sixers lose this game and at times they're probably up 15 or 18 points and they win this by a nice easy five or six all right it's, screams to me uh, yeah. i mean i wouldn't i don't think putting a little money on the king's money line is a bad idea if you can find one of those but uh i mean 10 points is too much way too much all right finn talk to me man you got a uh, you got a dog barking uh, barking at you here on the card i if if you could tell me that kevin uh, first off let this trade talk about kevin love i don't yeah. know what all this crap's about what else but if you can tell me that kevin love is interested in playing tonight and he's gonna play tonight I like Cleveland a lot. Anytime, listen, I like the Magic defensively, but if they're on the road and laying points, I know it's only a point and a half. I, I don't care. When right. they're laying points, something's wrong. They're not good enough 
to be laying points, even to a Cleveland or Chicago or, or the less than, because they too are a less than. Yeah, well, that's a lot of truth there. Dare I even uh, bring it up uh, there, uh, Ski? Should I? Get, <laughs> are they GS or are they Golden State tonight? What are we talking about tomorrow? Is, is Golden State actually going to pull an upset off against the Bulls at home? It's on. Uh, it depends. They're G. They're Golden State if Draymond plays. They're GS if he doesn't. <laughs> so, that's, I, if, that's the same thing. That, that's going to dictate whether they're going to win or not. So there that's you go. So true, man. All right, guys. Uh, best bets here. Let's uh, let's go around the horn. Don't forget. Uh, of course, you found a thousand dollars right in an envelope walking along the streets. You don't know what to do with it. You're like, hell, I got to go to the cage. Let me get rid of it. Get rid of the evidence. So you got a free, uh, you know, you got a G there to be able to bet, uh, Ski. Uh, where are you putting that $1,000 that wasn't yours to begin with? Where are you putting it? So what happens if you push with this $1,000? What happens? Oh, then you got to double it up the next day. We know that. Oh, okay, Let's go. Okay, let, okay. let it ride, brother. <laughs> let it ride. That's exactly it. <laughs> you, you know, I'm going to split it up this time. I'm, right. I'm going to do two. We talked about the Lakers on the first half. The Pelicans' first half is pretty much a fade. Uh, two and ten against the spread the last 12, so... I rock with the Lakers minus the three, I believe, on the first half. And the other side, Portland shouldn't be laying points. Portland's not that good. OKC's okay, so been great against the spread first half, I believe. Eight and three, their last 11 first half against the spread. So I'll take the other half as OKC first half. All right, there we go. Dr. Chuck, talk to me. Are you uh, are you splitting or are you just taking the whole uh, let's go, man? Just throw it down. <laughs> Putting it down. I don't care. Let's do it. Well, I think we might have both learned our lesson last night that we need to find a different route home like Brian did and uh, <laughs> stop his money. <laughs> Leonard just we, pocketed and took off. To... We won't see Leonard again for another week now. He took our grand and he left. <laughs> so he, yeah, he takes a different route home and he gives me and Ski each 500 bucks and we light it on fire <laughs> with the Mavs in the first half, who I think... <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember how bad it was. Uh, but, yeah, so I... All right, so I would probably split it as well. To uh, I like his idea of pushing mm -hmm. a little uh, gun shy now with that thousand lighting it on fire. But um, I'd probably throw I'd probably throw half of it on uh, Kings. Okay. I think okay. if you're getting the nine and a half, maybe even just make it ten, just because you'd be a pansy and you found the money. And, but um, I, I'd probably put the other half. I, I like. So I definitely like the Lakers. I already mentioned Lakers minus three in the first half, but just throw in a bet we haven't done yet. Uh, Wizards on no rest, um, really almost as bad in the first half as the Pelicans. They've also only covered two of the last ten in the first half, and the Suns you only have to lay four who are rested, and the Wizards play less defense than the Pelicans. So mm. I'd probably throw the other half on the Suns minus four in the first half. All right, uh, Finn, it's up to you. You got it, man. What are you doing, man? What are you doing with that dime? First half play, box minus eight and a half. And uh, it's not just a straight bet. This is a well, this is a one large parlay, two team. Wow. Milwaukee minus eight and a half over 123 first half against Atlanta. I think they're up by, I, I, I'm a little different than some of the other talk. I think they're up by 2025. 20, and the second half becomes an issue going over that 240 where the first half's not an issue at all. That's what I like. Milwaukee, minus eight and a half over 123. Then we'll parlay it tomorrow on something, okay? I love it. I do want to say this, though, guys, uh, your trend of the day. The, uh, speaking of the Hawks, they are not only 10 and 0 to the over in their last 10 games, but they've gone over by a 12.8 points per game in that mad in that uh, in that span. So 10 straight games to the over, and they're they're not just squeaking by, guys. They're doing it by double digits. And one other trend that might be of interest: when a team has gone over the total at least 10 points in three straight games, that would be Utah tonight. And the opponent went over in their last game, that would be Indiana tonight. Play the over since 2016, 63, 25, and 1. 71.6% to the over tonight, Utah, Indiana. And those are your uh, those are our favorite trends of the day. So there you go. You got, uh, we pretty much, I don't know, we stole $1,000 from somebody, and we've all spent it here numerous <laughs> times, so it's good to go. We love that. Uh, but uh, Ski, Dr. Chuck, uh, Finn at Wager, all places that you need to go on Twitter, and make sure you're tailing. Also, wagertalk.com. Guys, the plays are up uh, tonight. Are you guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Yeah. Play, nothing uh, stopping you. 
right? Yeah, I'm going to be making a couple probably. It's just 14 games to decipher through, so. He's going to be, yeah, he's going to be going. Next thing you know, he'll say, oh, I got next thing you know, you'll have 13 plays up there, man, for ski. So, <laughs> wagertalk.com, sportsmemo.com for Dr. Chuck. That's where you guys got to go. And uh, I think I speak for all of us here, guys, that uh, we wish you and yours a very uh, happy and safe Thanksgiving. Uh, enjoy the games. Make it a profitable one. We'll be back on Friday getting you ready not only for Friday's card but the weekend. So, ski. Dr. Chuck, Tony, have a happy Thanksgiving, guys. Thanks for the time. Good luck to your plays tonight. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Be good, Better guys. Keep, Enjoy. Give me adult beverages right now. Adult yeah, it, beverages. He's hitting the he's the tequila time. Happy Thanksgiving, yeah. guys. <laughs>